This interview is brought to you by Gamefly. So happy to be joined by Brian Lindley, the producer on Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Now, you're with PopCap. Yep. And when you look at Plants vs. Zombies, Bejeweled, mm -hmm. Hegel, you're thinking, yes, the first-person shooter multiplayer is in the DNA of this company. I mean, are, 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 are you a legacy employee of PopCap, or have you, do you have experience in kind of the genre of game that this is? Uh, we definitely have experience with the engine we're using, for sure. So our team, uh, when we started the project, uh, was sort of adopted by PopCap specifically to build Garden Warfare. So we had a lot of experience with the Frostbite engine, and that helped kind of steer us a direction in terms of us taking Plants vs. Zombies in a direction no one's ever seen before. No, I mean, it, it is, at first, it's like, hold on, is this a good idea? You know, having just sort of played some of it upstairs, the, the yep. horde mode. No, it, it makes perfect sense. But how much are you sort of adopting the, the, the structures of, you know, a, a, a multiplayer shooter? And then how do you sort of modify that so it does incorporate what is essential to Plants vs. Zombies? A couple different ways. So the way we infuse more tower defense into the experience is plants can sort of fortify locations by calling in a lot of the classic characters from the original game. So your pea tutors, your, your pea shooters, your repeaters, your fume shrooms, your, your daisies, all that stuff come in and help the plants defend. You also infuse that a bit into the multiplayer experience because the zombies also can summon a lot of the classic zombies to come fight with them. So we've tried to kind of intermingle a bit of the original sort of charm and spirit of those characters into the multiplayer experience while still making it feel like a legitimate skill-based multiplayer. Now, the plants and zombies, um, neither's known for its mobility or agility. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at a, at, a, at a battlefield, if you look at something like a Call of Duty, you have parachuting, you have climbing ladders. Um, that's something you really can't accomplish. So how do you sort of structure the levels so you're still giving that sense of, I can scurry away into a corner of a map and, 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 and do something interesting? Yeah, so we, we spend a lot of time just iterating on the level design to make sure, number one, that it flows well and that there are places where the plants especially can kind of hunker down and fortify if they need to get away from the, the zombie chaos. Uh, and we've given mobility to the characters, which is kind of strange when you think about it. But when you see it in action, most people just kind of get used to it and play. Um, but, but with also building some verticality in the levels for so characters like the pea shooter, which has a hyper ability, can get up on a roof, but he can fight with the soldier zombie who has a rocket jump, can also get up on the roof and try to create both vertical gameplay as well as kind of places where he can hide or camp a little bit, uh, depending on the play style. Um, now, I, I think as many people know, especially those who do not play games all the time, um, just jumping into a multiplayer match and your typical military shooter is you're not going to see anything other than a loading screen yep. <laughs> or just what your stats are, which are quite poor. Yep. Um, Plants vs. Zombies has a very broad appeal. So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you have that balance where it is a good shooter, but one that you know, someone who isn't as accustomed to the genre can get into and can perform quite well? I think the, the way we primarily attack that is, is try to create character classes that will be good entry points for players that maybe are not super familiar or experienced with shooters. So when I look at like the sunflower who's the healer for the plant team to get involved with that character is pretty straightforward if all people around and heal them that kind of gets you kind of into the battle and kind of feeling the dynamic similarly with uh, with the zombie team if I just want to heal people I play the scientist just stick around drop healing stations get kind of accustomed to the action before I really feel like I have to be a super skilled twitch gamer to succeed um, now w one thing which is quite apparent in this game which I think outdoes just about any other shooter I can think of is the amount of rewards you can get for yourself. You're doing this through sticker packs. Yep. And you know, that, that it, it gets you new assets, it gets you more inventory, it gives you upgrades. Um, how sort of broad is that? And uh, you know, the, the balancing must get a little bit tricky if you have that many options for customization. Yeah, so we, we wanted to kind of go big with customization as one of our goals. So yeah, we've got a dozens and dozens of options for every character to outfit and make themselves look unique. And that kind of feeds our sticker pack system, giving players continually things that they can chase after in the, in the experience. So they don't always just, they're not just gonna run out and max out their characters. There will always be something more for them to kind of seek out and try to try to get for their character to make them stand out, make them play differently as well. Um, how, how frequently are you getting these re rewards? It's based on an in-game currency, correct? Correct. So uh, players will be earning coins throughout the course of gameplay. So as you're just playing normally, you're gonna get coins. At the end of a round, you can choose to save up your coins or if you wanna just start buying up stuff for you know, maybe chase some of the less rare items, you can do that. Or if you want to save up your money for the really rare, cool stuff, you can do that as well. It really comes down to how the player wants to invest their in-game money and their time uh, it, for whatever items they're most excited to go after in the game. Now, of course, the currency is coins, and you're, for, and you're using that phrase for in-game money. Um, 
that always sets up, it's the, it's the big question nowadays, whether or not that's also going to transfer to real world money mm -hmm. to kind of buy your way to success or at least to upgrades yep. with, within the game. Yeah, so it's, it's certainly an option for, for players if they want to accelerate their experience and get more things more quickly. We're a bit on the fence still in terms of what we're going to do. I think at launch we probably won't have any sort of real money transactions enabled in the game, but I think as we start to expand the experience, similar to the way Mass Effect 3 expanded their multiplayer experience, we will probably start to introduce more of that down the line. Now, it's also a, a multiplayer game. It's with EA. Obviously, Battlefield 4 has had some challenges in terms of mm -hmm. you know, what's been happening on the servers. You, you, you must be aware of that. Is, what, what, what can you do to try to predict and prevent you know, some of those problems from happening? A lot of it just comes down to preparation and testing. I think. Um, in fairness to the Battlefield team, they had uh, some pretty hard deadlines to hit with trying to launch with the consoles. Uh, for us, we've had a little bit of more extra time to help us iron out the kinks and make sure that when we launch, that it's going to be as smooth as possible for our, for our customer. Um, and then today, what I got a chance to play was, uh, it, it, it's your variance on Horde mode, and forgive me, I have forgotten the name of it. Garden Ops. Garden Ops, which, which, which makes perfect sense. Of um, if, if you could kind of explain sort of what you've done, this is all plant-based. You're, you're playing the, the plants and the zombies are coming to, towards you. Correct. So uh, Garden Ops, uh, the plants, obviously the way they're designed, they're very defensive in nature. That's the what they are in the Plants vs. Zombies universe. So their jobs is to plant a garden and defend that garden from the endless crazy waves of zombie hordes. So they do that by fortifying their base, by working together with their team, by also working with people helping in the companion boss mode experience as well, um, and, and trying to survive endless sort of crazy waves of zombies, and that it just escalates in intensity and insanity as you go along. And it, this one seems to be a little bit more, it, it seems closer to kind of the core elements, the tower defense, yep. that is the plants versus zombie game. I'm, I'm curious if, you kind of, if, if you guys approached this mode first because it was so close in spirit to what the original game is. It wasn't the first thing we built, but we definitely spent a lot of time at prototyping our multiplayer, trying to figure out how do we infuse that tower defense element. And I think some of our multiplayer modes is where we first kind of tackled that. Um, but then we realized, God, co-op would be so much fun as well, and it's almost perfectly suited for the structure you're used to of you know, hunkering down and just trying to survive against endless crazy waves of AI. And the plants were already designed to play that way. So it almost was a no-brainer. Once we had the kind of core gameplay in place, we're like, well, heck, let's just do co-op as well. And Garden Ops was kind of born from that. Um, so obviously you, you, you must have some people that are trying out the game that are testing the game. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious sort of what the reaction is from people who are used to hardcore shooters and the reactions from people who love Plants vs. Zombies but really have not spent much time with, with, with this type of game. So the hardcore shooters is, is pretty obvious. Those guys grab the controller and they're, you know, gritting their teeth trying to figure out how to be uh, effective vanquishing machines as possible. But for people that are just fans of PVZ, you just see them, their eyes get really big and they smile and they're like, what am I looking at? Because a lot of their favorite characters are now realized and running around in 3D. So they take a bit of time to sort of just take that in before actually figuring out, okay, what is this game is? How do I interact with it? It's kind of the, the trend that we've seen. We, we kind of wow the PVZ crowd while the shooter guys just go straight at it and try and take stuff down. As I said before, it's something that I was like, okay, this is okay. And now having played it, it really is. It's fun to be in that world from that vantage point. Yep. And the game comes out. Uh, February 25th on Xbox One and Xbox 360. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks thank so much. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. And now let's take a moment and thank our sponsor, Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service, offering you a choice from over 8,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at just $15.95 a month, and members can rent one to four games at a time, keeping them for as long as they like. Once you're done playing, just send the game back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. You can support Red 3 Games and get a free 15-day trial when you sign up at Gamefly.com slash Red 3 Games.